Vrabel's going to challenge. Yes, I'm getting hyped up. The Indianapolis receiver completed the process of the catch before the ball was punched out by the Tennessee defender. Go crazy. The Titans are going to win this football game. Tighten up. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keefe. The Titans have won four in a row. On Sunday, Tennessee knocked off Indianapolis for the second time in October by a final score of 19 to 10. When we visited on Friday before the game, you said it was going to be like this. You, you have great admiration for what they do in Indianapolis. You appreciate their style of football. Your team met their challenge physically and you were able to win the ball game. Yeah, I think it's important to give credit uh, where, where you see it. And they, we, we talked about how uh, they were resilient. But, but again, you know, I think we are too. And uh, we were able to finish off uh, the victory. You know, again, you know, kneeling on the ball uh, against the division opponent. Uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about how we got there. But uh, I think I'm just really proud of our guys, the way they fought through and, and recognized the keys and what we needed to do to win. I want to give offense their due, but first, we've got to look at defense, right? Okay. All right, let's take a look at some defense. And the Titans had defense in the first half, actually scoring on defense and making big plays overall. Here is Andrew Adams. Yep, they came out and empty. Uh, our players, you know, Kevin Byard was able to get, get everybody the check. They recognized it and, and got lined up quickly. Um, we were able to put the pressure on them. You can see Bud matching the hand. Uh, not jumping, and then Andrew and Christian there to uh, to execute the coverage, and you know they both had a shot at it. But you know, guy coming free right there, like Buddy, was able to, to affect the quarterback. Uh, just well executed, good call, and uh, you know helped help win the game. Andrew Adams tied for a team high with 10 tackles in the ball game and his eighth career interception. That put the Titans up by a score of 10 to nothing in the second quarter. Colts were actually on the move again, and it's time for another interception and another one from David Long Jr. Well, good job there. A collapse in the pocket. I think it starts up front. You know, Kevin Strong and Bud pushing the pocket. David started chasing um, outside the hash, and then I think a little voice reminded him that he better settle down and get back on it. And uh, he was able to find the football and, uh, you know, not much of a return, but but we secured the catch and, and the turnover. So. It's a good job there affecting the quarterback and collapsing the pocket. So before the play, you were giving him some sort of signal. Could you see something that you could help him with there? No, just making sure, you know what I mean, that, that he's doing a great job in that particular defense. And, you know, David's done a, done a great job for us. And he's extremely coachable, but he goes, he goes hard, and he's an instinctive player. He's fun to have around. All right, let's get after the quarterback a little bit here with Jeffrey Simmons. Now four and a half sacks on the year. For a moment, he had the team lead. Yep, and so, you know, this is uh, about team defense right here. David's picking, and uh, Jeffrey is allowed to come free because David's efforts. And that's, that's what exactly what we're talking about is the team defense and, you know, one guy helping somebody else, and, and it'll come back to you. And that's exactly what happened here. The most undersold fact about Jeffrey Simmons, the hustle? I would say, yeah. Every time you see a ball, you know, completed four or five yards from the line of scrimmage. He's running and he's chasing. And he does that 80% 80, 80 of the time he's in there uh, for us. He plays a lot. All right, so let's take a look at the second half kickoff. So this is a special teams play, but you got to like this hit from Monty Rice. Yeah, you know, you go down there, you run down there with some speed, and, you know, sometimes you're invisible and they forget to remember to block you, but you still got to go down there and execute and, you know, huge play. And, you know, Monty was excited. He was into it. Uh, had had a bunch of guys that were covering kicks and swarming, and you know this is uh, it, this is the tone setter that we we talk about setting the table and sending messages. Just don't know where he's going. You got to go find some teammates, celebrate with them, and 
and we'll get that figured out. He just kept running. He there did. He goes. Good to have him back, though. Yeah, I know. He's, he's getting his feet wet, and, and hopefully we'll get him back out there playing a little linebacker and see where that goes. Okay. So we mentioned that Jeffrey Simmons had the team lead in sacks for a moment until Danico Autry got number five to retake the team lead. Here it is. Yep, and uh, there's Jeff helping him out. You know, Jeff gets up the field. Danico wraps around. You know, going for the football. We need to get these footballs out. We have to attack it there in the pocket. And, uh, and hopefully it comes out of there the next time. We just keep hammering at it with the quarterback. That's the easiest target on the field. So, you know, it's always great to see Danico. He puts a lot into it and especially has success against the Colts. He and Jeffrey Simmons seem to have a thing. They, they know what the other's going to do. They work well off one another. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? They're both very uh, instinctive, and, you know, they both play a lot of football for us, and so it's nice to see them work off each other. All right, let's look at the last Titans defensive snap. Initially called an incomplete pass, but there was a challenge. Well, it was a huge play here by Terrence, uh, by T. Mitch, and, you know, he's able to not give up on the play, and, and that's exactly what we talk about is, you know, they catch it, and uh, something that we work on here, you can see him track the football all the way into the pocket, hammer it, get the hand in there as, as it was being tucked away, three steps, you know, after the control. So, you know, we figured it was a, we, it looked like a catch to us, and, you know, New York uh, thankfully agreed. One, two, three, football move, balls out. There's Amadi Hooker falling on it, and, Andrew Adams falls on top of him to make sure nobody gets there. Him, yeah, <laughs> protect him and clear recovery. And, you know, you can't return it because it was incomplete, but all you have to do is make sure that you recover it. So it was a huge play for us. And the Titans run out the clock to win the game 19 to 10. When we come back, a look at some of the big offensive plays from Sunday's win over Indianapolis. That's when the Mike Vrabel Show continues, presented by Shift 4 after this. Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. A second six-pack from the Bed MGM Studios. This one having to do with offense. Yeah, it wasn't all defense. It wasn't all defense. How about a little Cody Hollister? Well, longest play of the day. Great protection. Ryan's able to progress through. Uh, Cody continues to, to help us and, and play and take advantage of his opportunities. Physical at the top of the route against, uh, you know, a really, really good corner and 27-yard uh, game, and, but the protection was really good. Ryan progressed through, looked over at Woods, and then came back, and uh, it was great to see this, and, and good throw, good catch. Cody's a big guy. He is, and he's one of our best blockers. He plays special teams for us. He does a lot, and, uh, you know, he, he's our type of guy, man. He gets everything that he earns. Speaking of big guys, how about a little Derrick Henry run this close? to take in one to the house. Here was a good one. Yep, good stretch and cut. And uh, guys trying to finish on the second level. You know, Nick's trying and Derek goes in, back out. And you know, that's what you need though. You need all 11. There's the combination. Dylan working up to the second level, taking him on the angle and finds him. Brew, Swaim there, you're gonna see come into the picture, giving a shove late, you know, and then now it's on Derek. And uh, we got a lot of confidence in him. And, you know, excited to, to see where we can continue to progress. 23 yards on that play for Derrick Henry. In the third quarter, the Titans need a play on third down. And so for the first time in this game, Ryan Tannehill turns to Austin Hooper. Yep. And, uh, you know, again, the, the protection held up. And, you know, that this is you know, one of the leading tackler in the National Football League. Hoop's able to cut back on and get a huge first down. And, you uh, they kind of had us there for a little bit. Ryan didn't like what he saw, progressed through. You know, I, I went over there, I said, hey, great job, Hoop. You know what I mean? Huge play. He said, open field tackle drill. I said, so it made me happy that uh, he felt like something that we did last week in practice, you know, helped us win a football game. 14-yard pickup there to pick up a first down. Two minutes later, same drive, Austin Hooper again with a fantastic catch and a great throw by Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, it really was. And he's got a lot of faith in him, tight coverage, but he throws it on the back shoulder. He's able to go up there and high point it. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, we're going to need some of these plays down the field. And, you know, he's got great catch radius. And, you know, that this, these are the types of plays that we're going to need to have. Out of Stanford, part of an athletic family, outstanding athlete in his own right, two-time Pro Bowler, Austin Hooper with his second catch. That's not even the big one. The big one came with 5.32 remaining in the game. 
Titans leading 16 to 10, facing third and six at their own 44. How does he do it? Well, I think first of all, it starts with protection. We need to, uh, you know, take care of the quarterback, which we do. Ryan's able to slide, and then, you know, it just great concentration, uh, great focus, and uh, it was a huge play, huge play, and you know, give Ryan credit for sliding out of there, give the line credit, and then, you know, Hoop's able to get it. He goes and attacks it. They try to make a play on it. You know, catch it once, catch it twice, catch it three times, and secure it. And you know, the holy grail. There it is. He's raising it up. Pinned against his left wrist. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Oh, I'm sure we could go back and. Find I it. don't We've know. Done this it's a long time. Fantastic. But on the same drive, let's give Randy Bullock some love. He made one, two, three, four of them. This one from 48, which essentially clinches it. Yep, and they were they were all straight. I mean, kicked the ball extremely straight and accurate. And uh, this was good to see. He had a great day. And, you know, when you're not scoring it in a red zone, scoring touchdowns, well, then, you know, Randy's got to do his job. And, you know, we just had an off day in the red zone, and hopefully we can get back on track next week. Well, you're kind of do one. You've been so good, you can't be that great forever, right? Well, you are. You, no, you know, here we go. When we come back, somebody who's always great, Amy Adams Strunk, the Titans owner, talking about the big news from today and throughout the course of the last week, and that is the new Titans stadium and the looks. If you haven't seen it, you'll see it here next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Earlier today, Titans fans had their first opportunity to see the initial renderings of the new Titans stadium that is on the drawing board right now. Everybody I know is really excited about it, especially Titans owner Amy Adams Strunk. I had a chance to visit with her about everything going on with the new stadium talk. What is it to start with that you're specifically most excited about? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm excited for the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee because I think this is going to be a real game changer with these big events that will come to town. And I'm excited for our fans, but, but also for the folks of Nashville and Tennessee. You're so good at this because you lead me to the next question. You are one of the most fan-centric owners in all of sports anywhere. Why are the fans so important to you and have you kept them in mind so much through this entire process leading to this moment? Well, thank you for that. But you know what? I, I always have the fans in my thoughts. When, whenever I make a decision, whether if it's something to do with football or something to do with the stadium or something to do with the new stadium, I'm always thinking about what are my fans, what are they going to like? And, you know, whether I'm out in the tailgates with them or wherever we are, it's just fun being with them and hearing their thoughts. And, and I'm listening. Well, you are listening. And, listening. and there are going to be more thoughts to come because we're just at the start of this. But from, from their experience, what are you hoping? that the first thing that really jumps out to them about the new stadium is, is all about. What do you want for the fans first and foremost? It was so important as the last two years, this journey that we've been on, that, that this stadium looks like Nashville. We didn't want it to look like a stadium in another city. It has to have that Nashville feel, which I think is going to be great and going to be different than what's around the country. But when you get inside the stadium, it was important to us that every single seat is perfect. It's just gonna be a great seat. I wanna wrap up with this one. Your dad took a chance on this city over a quarter century ago. I'd say it's worked out okay. If he I'd were, say. If he were here right now and he saw the renderings and he knew what the plan was and how people have come together to make this happen, what in the world would he say? Oh my gosh, he'd be so excited. You know, I'm gonna tell you a little story about my dad. When he was making the move from Houston, Nashville was the only city he would look at. And the people that were helping him tried to get him, go to LA, Mr. Adams, you need to at least see these other spots. And he wasn't having it. He was like, I'm going to Nashville. Mayor Bredesen and I are gonna get this done. He loved Tennessee and he loved Nashville and there was going to be no other home for him. So he would be so proud. That is Epic Western's genuine Titan, Amy Adams Strunk. And 
Why? Well, I'll throw three things at you. Six straight winning seasons. She got the 2019 NFL draft here. She's the 2019 Tennessee end of the year from the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And Mike Vrabel, she gets stuff done. Yeah, and the thing that I always appreciate is she allows John and I to do our job. She, she trusts us and, you know, uh, communicates, you know, clearly with what did she wants and her expectations and, you know, her, her ability to come through here and give us the facilities that we need, uh, the fans. I, I think that that's clearly obvious, uh, her thought about the fans and how important and how critical they are to, to our success as an organization. If you want to take another look at the renderings, go to TennesseeTitans.com. They're up there. The new stadium renderings released to the public today. There's going to be a lot more to come as people get excited about the new downtown Nashville Stadium. When we come back, we're going to know our foe, the Houston Texans. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Welcome you back to the Bed MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Time to know your foe, the Houston Texans. It is a 3.05 kickoff this Sunday at NRG Stadium. Texans won 4-1. and one. They lost to the Raiders after leading going into the fourth quarter. Let's talk about their young quarterback, Davis Mill. Yeah, I think he's really starting to settle down and, and figure out how to take care of the football. Um, you know, they're going to try to run it and use play action and you know, you can see him, the more that he stays in the pocket, uh, he can be successful. And you know, we're going to have to continue to find ways to, to affect him, but we're going to have to stop this running game. Number one high school quarterback in America coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, when he went to Stanford. And uh, good player last year, even better player this year. He's got a back now, too, a young man from Florida named Damian Pierce. Yeah, compact, strong runner, uh, one cut runner, gets downhill. Uh, he has fumbled twice, but I mean, you can see like you're going to have to have you're going to put shoulder pads on him and and gang tackle him. You know, he's going to run through some arm tackles and you know just that one cut that we talk about that you continue to see. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time, you know, dancing. So you know, it'll be important that we swarm and uh, we rally to the football with with Pierce. He's one of those strange running backs that seems to enjoy contact. Well, that usually helps, you know, and, <laughs> and you can start to put, you know. They've stayed in games. You know, they've been leading, you know, in a lot of these games. They've outscored opponents 99 to 79 and through three quarters. So, you know, they've been up in some games and they've been able to, to run it. And, you know, they went down to Jacksonville and, and pounded the, the football and was able to win down there. So you know, we're going to have to go down there and be ready for them. The head coach, Lovey Smith, is known for defense. What does the Texans' defense look like? Speed. They move, they move guys up front. Their, their, their front is active. The linebackers run, overlap, and... You know, they've been able to attack the football and get some turnovers and, and, and cause you know, interceptions and cause fumbles. So another new challenge every week. When we come back, Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys to victory over the Houston Texans. How do the Titans get to 5-2? and two? He'll tell you next. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Shifts to the Nissan Keys, to beating the Houston Texans on Sunday. I, I would think they're going to want to run the ball. I do. I think that this is what they've decided to do uh, with Damian Pierce. I think they've, you know, 100 carries, 500 yards, close to, you know, 4.9 a carry. Um, you know, you can't just assume because you stop the run one week. Every week is different. Uh, no, no cracks, gang tackle this guy. Um, they they want to run the football, play some defense, play action with Mills, so I think it's going to start with Pierce and, and forcing these guys into some longer yarded situations. You know, Pierce never carried the ball more than 100 times in his career at Florida in the well, season, they so should, he's they, fresh. They should, have carried, they should have given it to him more because he's a good running back. Yeah, he really is. All right, so let's take a look at Nissan key number two. Don't just talk about third down. Talk about first and second down. Yeah, we, we, you can just see the difference, Mike, in our drives during the season when we're able to string some plays together if we're efficient on first and second down. Brings up third and short, convert. You know, last week we had two 11-play drives, a nine-play drive, and an eight-play drive against a team that uh, was second in the league in three and outs. So, you know, we can do it. We just have to do it more consistently and avoid those critical mistakes or those negative plays that, 
you know, derail the drive. You always have a key in special teams. What is that key this week? We have to get back to being great in punt coverage. You know, Desmond King uh, averages a first down every time he returns it. We got to keep punting it better, and, and we have to cover kicks. Our, we got to get something out of our gunners. Our interior guys got to cover a lot of ground, and, you know, that's just something where I felt like last week we took a step back. Overall, your special team's been very good. Not bad. Fair not, to middle. All right, not bad. That's going to do it for this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Remember, Titans Radio Sunday at 3.05, Titans and the Texans. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.